continue to simplify some rational expressions. Um, I'm continuing, this, this particular segment is going to stay in an introductory algebra course. Um, the third segment that I'm going to add to this um, sequence of um, simplifying rational expressions would be more for an intermediate algebra course. So let's take a look at this one. Factor, factor, factor. So I have the difference of squares in this problem. So this has got to be factored into the product of two binomials. And the front of each of those binomials is x, because x times x is x squared. Because of the minus sign, one of these has to have a plus, one of them has to have a minus. And the term that goes in the back of each of these is a 1, because the square root of 1 is 1. If that had been a 9, those would be 3s. So done. I've got that factored. I can use um, guessing and checking to factor this. I could use that AC method. I might just remind you of it really quick. So the AC method is to multiply um, and find two numbers whose product is a negative 2. And I want them to, boy, I'm not leaving myself enough room here. Let's try that again. Product is a negative 2. And adds to be the coefficient, which is a negative 1. And those two numbers are a negative 2 and a positive 1. And so what we do is we break this minus 1x into a minus 2x and a positive 1x. Because again, don't those combine to be a minus 1x? We bring our minus 1 down. We bring this 2x squared down. I'm going to get rid of this so we don't have to look at this. And then we group. So we group the first two terms and we group the last two terms. And don't forget, you can rearrange them if you'd like to. The common factor in these two is a 2x. So I'm going to factor out um, a 2x. And then there is no common factor here other than a 1. So just so I don't forget that term, I'm going to make sure to put that in as the common factor, that, that 1. And then if these match, then this is um, indeed factorable. And so I have x minus 1 and 2x plus 1. It also would have been that you wouldn't have found two numbers whose product is a negative 2 and adds to be a negative 1. And there's my factored form of this trinomial. Again, I could have guessed and checked, but I got x minus 1 and 2x plus 1. So in um, rational expressions, to simplify, to multiply, to divide, you factor everything like crazy. So we remove the common factors. These are in factored form, so they are factors. We remove those, and my answer is what's left in the numerator over what's left in the denominator. They either are identical or they don't get reduced. So we're done with that one. Uh, let's go ahead and talk about opposites. So the problem I'd like to do is just real simple. It's a binomial over its opposite. It, exactly its opposite. This x is positive. That x has a minus sign in front of it, or plus a negative 1 in front of it. That's a minus 5. This is a positive 5. Those are almost identical, but what I really need to think about doing is to remove a factor of a negative 1. I'm inclined, personally, to keep my x in front. So I like to remove a negative 1 out of the denominator of this binomial. And I'm going to put the x term in front. So when I take a negative 1 out of this, if I put a positive x right here, a negative 1 times x is that minus x. But then right here, I'm going to need a minus 5 because a negative 1 times a minus 5 is this positive 5 that's right here. And I have factored out a negative 1. Upstairs, I have just x minus 5, and if you wanted to, you could think of it as 1 times x minus 5. Not necessary, but I want you to be careful. Now you can reduce these. You can take them and remove the common factor of 1, and what you're left with is 1 divided by a negative 1, or when you have two binomials that are opposites, they are just equal to a negative 1. What I'll regularly do is when I see those, I'll just cross them off and say I have a negative 1 left in their place. They're almost identical. They're just opposites. So we'll see a few more of those as we go along here. The next problem's got one. So let's use a difference of squares. And 
And so again, you're supposed to factor, factor, factor. I'm not inclined. There's no reason for me to consider taking out a negative one out of those. It's, it's difference of squares. It's easy to factor. I'm going to go ahead and call it 5 plus x in one set of parentheses and 5 minus x in the other. So not necessary to factor out. And then down here I've got a trinomial and I'm looking for two numbers whose product is a positive 25 and they need to add to be 10. Oh, that's a perfect square. 5 are those two numbers. So that factors into x plus 5 and x plus 5. And I'm now ready to go about the process of reducing. Addition is a commutative process. It doesn't need to be done in, you know, 5 plus x, x plus 5. These two are exactly the same. So I thought I had a problem on my notes that was going to be opposites, but they're not. Um, I can reduce those. They are e exactly equal to 1. And my final answer for this problem is 5 minus x and x plus 5. Let's just do a real quick reminder of um, restrictions on the domain. The original denominator had these two values. Since they're identical, the only value for x that's troublesome for us is a negative 5. Because if you put in a negative 5 for x and added 5 to it, you'd have 0. And 0 times you know, anything, it doesn't matter, is equal to 0. And so that's my restriction on this particular function. Uh, let's hope, I'm going to grab a new pen. Let's hope that this next problem has some opposites. I do believe it does. So again, remember that you have to factor everything before you can do any reducing. So nothing can be done in this numerator. But the denominator has a 2 that will come out of it. Um, I'm going to come on over here and write 2 times 5a minus 6. So in parentheses, 5a minus 6. And upstairs, I have 6 minus 5a. Again, those are opposites. This minus 5a and down here I have a positive 5a are opposite in sign. This is a positive 6. This is a minus 6. You'd be welcome to just cross them off and say that there's a negative 1 left in their place. However, if you would have if you wish to show your reason or your rationale, you could say this numerator could have a negative 1 factored out of it. And then this would be a positive 5a and this would be a minus 6. Just check it out. Does that give you that term? And does this give you the positive 6? And if so, you can go ahead and cross off those common like factors. And our answer to this problem is a negative 1 over 2. I failed to mention that um, I could have um, a number that I could put in for a in the original expression. And no matter what, when I put that value in for a, I will get, um, and I put it into my final output, I would get the same answer. Now this one doesn't have any letters left in the results, but I just want you to know that let's say I let um, a, I don't know, equal the number 4. So I'm going to come over here, and I'm going to put a 4 in anywhere I see a. So 6 minus 5 times 4, and down here, 10 times 4 minus 12. And using order of operations, I should multiply, so that's a 20. So I have 6 minus 20, which is a negative 14. And down here, I have 40 minus 12, which is a positive 28. And when I reduce that fraction, I get a negative one-half. So I'll try it again um, in one of our next problems. Um, but recognize that the original expression is equivalent to the final expression. And there's many areas of science and health where we don't wish to work with this original expression. We want to work with the simplified form. Let's say we're calculating the dosage for a child's um, antibiotic, and it's a rational expression. I'd much rather work with a simplified expression um, than the, this original problem. I'm going to take a break. Um, the next video clip is going to be a little bit more appropriate for an intermediate algebra student, but the same topic.